Hello, everyone. Welcome to Research Talks, Qualitative Scholar Conversations. I'm Ray Mayetta, President of Research Talk. We're happy today to have with us Johnny Saldana. Johnny has been a scholar with us for quite a long time. We are honored and proud to have him as part of our team and looking forward to joining today in a conversation with him. Johnny, we want to hear about your Coding and Analyzing Qualitative Data course. It will be offered again at the Summer Intensive. This is a course that we have every year. It is one of the most popular courses. So if you want to start off and just let us know a little bit about the origins of this course, possibly why this course. Research Talk uh, commissioned this course because I had written the book, The Coding Manual for Qualitative Researchers, which is handled by Sage Publishing. And so, uh, because coding is that kind of elusive process, what I did was I brought into the course for research talk different ways of approaching the analysis of data through coding. Coding has over a half century of use in qualitative inquiry. And what I learned myself about coding was that when I took qualitative research methods courses in the 1990s, the textbooks at the time really did not explain coding very well at all. And so uh, Sage uh, asked me to put together a book proposal on coding. And so what I did for the coding manual was put together over 30 different ways that you could take a look at approaching data through the analytic method of coding. So with the coding manual, what I do is, because we only have a few days in these workshops, I limit the number of coding uh, exercises to approximately seven, ranging all the way from the most well-known, such as in vivo coding, which is using the language of the participants themselves, all the way up to causation coding, which is trying to understand the pathways of progress, change, process, and the course has evolved over time to where what we do now is we analyze one participant's data throughout so that we're taking a look at the same participant, but analyzing that participant's data in seven different ways. Again, I bring my methods, education, and pedagogy into this. I'm a big believer in knowing the rules before you can break them. So I try to do what I call high deep learning where things, if you will, go very high in terms of the conceptual richness and the analytic methods, but we also go deep so that we don't just sort of gloss over the data, but we really try to take a deep dive into it. So I try to achieve those two objectives in very strategic ways by focusing on just a limited number of coding methods and staying with one particular participant's data set. And I found that pedagogically that helps people not be as overwhelmed. What will be different this particular year now from previous offerings of coding is how the newer digital technologies like chat GPT-4 is now influencing qualitative data analysis. Uh, I'm working on the fifth edition now of the coding manual for qualitative researchers. And Sage asked me, make sure you talk about the emerging technology in this particular edition. And so what I've been doing is experimenting with ChatGPT4 to find out how that platform's analyses compares to my own analyses. And it's been some very interesting things. Can ChatGPT4 do all the analysis? It can help with some basic things, but it's still lacking a lot of things that humans can do, such as critical evaluation, such as emotional intelligence, such as being able to have background and context about the data. So there are some limitations, but there are some advantages. And as I've been going through workshops and conferences, I've been attending those sessions where people are talking about artificial intelligence and chat GPT to learn a lot more about it. And the basic consensus is don't be afraid of it. Try to find out now how you can integrate it into your qualitative data analytic work. And so that's what I'm going to be doing at this year's coding workshop. 